What's up guys, it's Denamiar and welcome to my channel. Spell it backwards, I'll show you. <laughs> Hey what's up guys, it's the Namir here and today I'm going to be bringing at you a fight kiln guide. The gear setups I recommend for the kiln are in the three following slides. I recommend that higher levels bring only two combat switches and that lower levels bring all three in a hybrid setup. Hybrids should probably go with either void or war priest armor and higher level two switches should go with whatever is listed on these slides. The styles you bring as a double switch as a higher level are all really dependent on what your levels are. If you're 99 and everything, I would bring melee and ranged or magic and ranged. Those are the two I would recommend the best, but it is all up to you. Your inventory setup should consist of something like this. The question mark slots are for basically whatever you want to bring extra extra food overloads all that stuff your beast of burden should be filled with rock tails and at least two brews and three super restores the armor icons are for whatever switches that you may need alrighty guys let's go ahead and get into this this little scene you'll sacrifice your fire cape if you haven't done it before and you'll get into the kiln First wave is going to be just simple. You're going to kill down the rangers with whatever style you're using, hiding behind the L shaped rock. At the end of this wave, you'll see an invulnerability crystal spawns. Pick that up and get back to the L shaped rock. Wave 2 is going to be pretty much the same as wave 1. Just finish off everything with your combat style. Switch to hide around the rangers. Do whatever you need to. These first few waves are not going to be too difficult. Wave 3. You're going to hide behind the L shaped rock. Which is going to be the theme recurring between waves 1 and 9. At the end of this wave, a restoration crystal is going to spawn. You're going to want to pick that up and get back to the L-shaped rock. From this point on, you're going to want to pick up all restoration crystals, invulnerability crystals, and constitution crystals. Also, before you get too far into the fight killing, you'll want to pick out which combat style you want to do the most damage with. Because the combat style that you do happen to do the most damage with is going to affect what cape you get in the end. So if you're going for the onyx, this is not going to matter to you. However, if you want the mage cape, do mage, melee cape, do melee the most, and range cape, do range the most. At the end of this wave, you're going to have to fight a cow dill. And the dills, basically you just run back and forth, hit them with your pickaxe. This is how I do them, pretty much. You have to break their skin off, and then you can kill them. The pickaxe on your tool belt will suffice. As long as you follow all of the spots that I am standing in in this video, you will be perfectly fine and not have to use hardly any food or hardly any prayer because most everything you'll only have to fight one or two at a time. At the end of the next wave, you're going to fight your first Jad. Jad should be fairly simple. All you need to do is stand on the northeast side of the middle rock. The middle rock on the northeast side will provide you complete protection from Jad when he spawns. He will not be able to attack you or really do anything for the, that matter. When Jad does spawn, you're going to want to take a deep breath, eat up a rock tail, and be prepared for any prayer switching. The new Tokar Jad no longer does damage when the attacks are done. The damage is calculated when the attack hits you, whereas it used to be the attack did a predetermined amount of damage before the attack actually animated on the screen. So just be prepared, walk out, kill Jad, get ready, do all that stuff, and Jad in the kiln dies very 
very easily, as you've just seen. After you've killed the remaining monster, you'll have seen your L-shaped rock has shrunk. This will not affect you using it as a safe spot, and the start of this wave will be mages. You're going to want to use the L-shaped rock as a safe spot, just like you have been in the past few waves. The wave after this will be the exact same concept. I also want to apologize for not doing a guide on which waves of crystals you're going to need to pick up or are going to spawn on. Uh, RuneScape Wiki has a really nice page dedicated to this on their Fight Kiln page. Um, I would go ahead and use that to see which waves monsters are going to spawn on. Obviously you're going to have a JAD on wave 10, wave 20, wave 30, wave 34, 35, and 36. Two JADs on wave 36. But the crystals, you'll just have to check every time. Uh, I sped the video up to a speed where it was really kind of hard to pick out which crystals <laughs> are actually there. Uh, so just pay attention to, on my video to when I run to the middle, and you should be able to pretty easily figure out which crystals to pick up. As for your combat switches, I would go ahead and switch to whatever uh, style the majority of the monsters are weak to on the wave that you're currently doing so if you have like melee and range if you have a, a wave that is primarily magic I would go ahead and switch to range if you have a wave that is primarily melee I would go ahead and switch to melee that way you're kind of exploiting weaknesses uh, monsters in the kiln take 50% damage for styles that they're weak not they're not weak against so that can be kind of a hindrance at the end of this wave, you're going to go ahead and fight a Jad. You're going to want to get this Dill down and hide on the northeast side of the rock. Once Jad spawns up, do the same thing that you did for the last Jad. Just a safe spot, and then pop out and kill him. Finish off this mage, and then you'll see a cutscene where your shit has shrunk again. Oh no, the L-shaped rock is no longer here. Well. That's not a problem because you'll be using the middle rock for the rest of the kiln. This wave is a great wave to use soul split on. If you have ice barrage, it's insanity. It's just over immediately. If you have melee, just switch to melee. The next wave is going to be full of some meleeers. If you have magic, switch to magic. If you have melee, switch to melee. Kill all the meleeers. This wave is the same thing. Just use melee or magic. This next wave is going to be a little different. You're going to want to run to the northwest corner and kill the ranger. Uh, I switched to range just for the hell of it, but you can keep on melee. And then switch over to the meleeers and kill them. The immediate following wave, you're going to stay in this corner and kind of dance around. You don't have to. If you want to use less food, you can uh, do the method I'm using right now. Or you can just stay in the corner. Finish off this wave, kill the rangers and mages first, depending on what styles you're using and then go into the northeast corner you could stay in the northwest corner if you want kill the melee and kill them or kill the mage and then work down everything else this wave can get a little crazy just do what you've been doing regularly use the middle rock as a safe spot this time after this wave is finished you're going to want to go to the southern rock go to the tip walk two spaces to the east this is going to be a safe spot to safe spot the two dills on the west side eat a constitution crystal because that will make you immune to the cat dills special attack the wave following will be six meleeers so stay on melee and just work everything down that is depending on your attack styles use mage on the next wave if you have it After this wave, you're going to be facing a Jad, your, your third Jad, I do believe. 
Go to your northeast side of the rock, kill the melees that spawn, and then work down Chad with your range mage. Never use melee on Jad, by the way. It is a very, very bad idea. Once Jad is dead, just finish down the melee, and the next wave should be relatively easy. If you've made it this far, obviously you know what to kill, and everything's going to be the same, so just use your weaknesses, exploit everything, and you'll get through these no problemo. Alright, and the end of this wave marks the start of your all JAD waves. Uh, you're going to want to stay on the northeast side of the rock for the first JAD. After this JAD is dead, you're going to want to walk onto the west side of the middle rock. And right before the wave 35 actually spawns, pop an invulnerability crystal just in case. I've seen some people get one-shotted because they didn't. And as long as you stand where I'm standing, you should be fine. But I use that as an insurance policy. Once the melee is dead, come out and kill Jad. Focus on Jad and Jad alone. You do not want to focus on anything else. Now the double Jad wave. When Jad spawns, you're going to want to attack the one on the left. And then what I like to do is at the very end, right before he dies, pop an invulnerability crystal just in case the other one can manage to get a shot in on you. Then attack the other one, keep on your prayer switching even though you have an invone crystal, and then finish the kill with Harakin. Harakin is relatively straightforward. I made a mistake here and popped a range crystal when I meant to uh, hit a constitution crystal, so I didn't get to use melee. Um, the head will pop up once every, I think, 40 sec 72 seconds, I believe and will be up for like 40 seconds. Just uh, whittle him down. He will never spawn on the northern side. Uh, as for the tentacles, I would go ahead and whittle them down with whatever style you're using. I would pray magic if you're wearing anything that is not ranged armor, and pray range if you're using ranged armor. And pretty much that's it. Just enjoy your kiln cape. You've got it. He'll, uh, he takes a little while to die, but once you've got him down, he it's really hard to die in this wave. And enjoy your kiln cape, guys.